Likbir Uld Muhammad Mahmoud is hungry and desperate. It's almost lunchtime and his family of four has not eaten anything. They did not even drink their morning tea. But Likbir has a plan. Likbir's family already ate the goat's mother. He wanted to fatten up his family's most prized possession before selling it, but he's broke and out of options. Twenty dollars would not even pay off his debt at the food store. Likbir needs twenty-four dollars, enough to pay off most of the debt and buy enough food to last for several days. But no one wants to pay that much. Likbir is trying to sell his last goat for a simple reason, to buy food. He's not alone. Hundreds of families in the shanty town in Nouakchott, Mauritania, and millions worldwide are on the verge of disaster. This disaster is not political or natural. These people are slowly going hungry because of global economics, because the price of food in the global market is steadily increasing. There's plenty of food here, but recently it has become too expensive for these people to buy. I of course cut down everything. For example, last year I could afford a kilo of rice or a kilo of wheat so we can have a big lunch. But you see, I can't. If I get some money, I will try to have half of what I used to have. Unable to sell the goat, Likbir moves on to plan B. He spends his day tending these goats. They're not his, nor does he work for the owner. He voluntarily cares for the animals. He gets water and hay. He milks them and tries to sell them to the buyers who come by. And then he waits and waits, sometimes all day, for the owner to pass by. When the owner does come, Likbir begs for a tip, telling him how much work he's done. If that doesn't work, he suggests running errands for the owner, like serving him tea. <laughs> He gets about four dollars to buy the owner tea and get water for the goats. Lickbear is usually allowed to keep the change after running these types of errands, and that's what happens today. After buying the owner tea and paying for the water, he's left with about a dollar, and that's his salary for the day, a single dollar. Likbir's life has never been easy, but he's always been able to provide food for his family by earning a dollar or two a day, but no longer. My life, yes, used to be tough, but I think this last year and this year is tougher, and it's good. I think it's going to be tougher. As Likbir serves tea at the goat market, his wife, Kadeja, scraps together lunch. She's making what they call pudding, a kind of mush made from rice, milk, and sugar. The pound of rice she uses now costs 50 cents, half of Likbir's income for the day. Last year, it was 30 cents. She makes this dish because rice is cheaper than other staples, like wheat or oil, which has more than doubled in the last year. She is almost always running out of food, and that's the case today. So she heads to the local store to spend the remainder of money Likbir earned. <laughs> and then some money she doesn't have. <laughs> Here, staples like milk and sugar come in increasingly smaller bags. That's all anyone can afford anymore. Even with the smaller sizes, Likbir's family is running a $20 debt here and adding to it nearly daily. Back home, the kids are getting hungry and grumpy, especially Likbir's daughter, Salma. She kind of, well, not complains, but asks a lot. Not only for breakfast or lunch or dinner, but for ice cream, for candies and cakes. Once the meal is ready, Khadija rounds up the children and heads to her mother's shack to eat. The family used to eat three meals a day. Now they routinely skip meals. When they have money to eat, they no longer are able to buy fish, fruit, or vegetables. They do occasionally eat meat, but usually the cheapest parts of the animal, like the intestines or the fat. This meal cost about a dollar, the same amount Likbir earned. 
And that's why he's skipping this meal. He's at the goat market, hustling for tips. He's still trying to earn something for dinner. Food prices in Mauritania fluctuate largely based on the global market. The country imports no less than 70% of its food. So when a drought hits Australia, or France diverts more of its harvest to ethanol production, the increase in price is passed on through the global market to ordinary Mauritanians. But it's not only about economics. Most of Mauritania is desert, and global warming means that the Sahara is growing. The most vulnerable areas of the country are not the poor shanty towns, but these tiny villages just south of the Great Desert, where the increasingly dry climate makes food cultivation more and more difficult. Out here, the World Food Program has already declared a food emergency. Est-ce que le prix de l'huile a augmenté? A recent assessment by the World Food Program showed that hunger has increased by 30% so far this year in these rural areas. The World Food Program has always had a presence here to help out during droughts and other times of food shortage. But the situation this year is different. The higher price of food is crippling the World Food Program at the same time it's hurting these villagers. Its budget for food aid has increased by 40 percent. And like these villagers, it doesn't have the extra cash. It's what we could call a perfect storm. Because of these prices that are increasing, the vulnerability is increasing. So the number of beneficiaries, the number of persons in need of food aid is increasing as well. In villages such as Buta, the effects of the food crisis are everywhere. Nearly all the men of this village have left to seek work elsewhere, leaving women and children with very little. Matuna Mint Mahmoud's husband has been gone for more than a year. She remains with their four children, including a set of 11-month-old malnourished twins. The malnourishment could be a result of a variety of factors, a lack of food or bad water, for example. But no matter the cause, treatment requires additional food, food that is becoming scarcer and scarcer. Last year I used to have five goats. Whenever I was really in need, I sold one. Now they're all gone. In a good week, Matuna can earn a little less than $3 sewing traditional clothes. But demand for the clothes is dropping as people spend more money on food. And anyway, her sick twins are requiring more and more of her time. Experts worry that if global food prices continue to rise, the food crisis here and in other import-dependent countries could turn into a large-scale famine. If that happens, these could very well be the first victims. I'm afraid of starving. I'm sure it's going to happen. It's even started. Still, there's nothing I can do. What can I do? 